Good morning and welcome. Thank you for joining me this morning. Uh, I want to point out that our, uh, I guess my slides were a little bit too large to be loaded into the BrainShark system this morning, so I am sharing my desktop, and that means that I can't see the chat box. So my request will be, because I don't have anybody manning the chat box for me today either, um, Sherry can answer technical questions about the webinar process itself, but content questions about the webinar, if you will email me those, if I don't answer them during the webinar, I would appreciate it and I'll be able to get back to you after the webinar. So my uh, email address is, in, is on the very last slide of the handout and of course will also be on the last slide that you'll see today. Um, so I want to get started and just tell you briefly, we're going to go over uh, cognition and deficits, a brief cognitive rehab overview, and then I'm going to talk some about cognitive rehab with older adults and cognitive deficits and how they affect functional abilities. So just to get started, um, I need to talk first a little bit about cognition. It's defined as the mental action or process of acquiring knowledge and understanding through thought, experience, and the senses. That is a Wikipedia definition, um, but it's, a, it's an easy to understand definition. <clears throat> so cognition encompasses those processes of knowing, including attending, remembering, and reasoning, also the content of the processes, such as the concepts and the memories. And that's from APA, from the American Psychological Association. So cognition encompasses knowledge, attention, memory, judgment, reasoning, comprehension, and language. And without cognition, we can't use our existing knowledge or generate new knowledge. These are internal mental processes that may be tested with behavioral methods, but they're not directly observable if you think about them. So just briefly, some of the functional areas of the brain. This is, of course, an extremely simplified model here, but again, it's, it's also an easy to understand <clears throat> model just to talk about or to demonstrate that each of the cognitive functions is associated with a particular area of the brain. And I should say not each, but most. Um, so starting on the upper left in the frontal lobe, you have thinking and planning and problem solving and decision making. We, we refer to most of those as executive functions. This area is also responsible for uh, impulse control or re, uh, response inhibition. Below that you see the temporal lobe, which controls memory and speech and hearing and facial recognition. At the rear of the brain is the occipital lobe, where vision and the processing of visual information is located. The parietal lobe controls perception, classification of objects, spelling, number recognition, and visual spatial processing. If you were to try to mark the attention areas of the brain, they would pretty much be all over. Uh, their, their attention areas in virtually every area of the brain, in the frontal lobe, the temporal lobe, the parietal lobe, the cerebellum, and the brain stem. Um, <clears throat> and you see here, you're looking at, at the left side of the brain, and the functional areas are not limited to just the left side of the brain. The same functional areas are found in the right hemisphere. Generally speaking, both hemispheres perform the same or can perform the same cognitive functions, and they usually share the workload. But there is some specialization on particular tasks. And again, there are a lot of diagrams available that, that show the functional areas of the brain. This is just an easy to understand one, and so I, I like to use it when talking about functional areas of the brain. <clears throat> if you really wanted a more realistic diagram, it would kind of look like this with each area of the brain talking back and forth with multiple other areas just to perform a single function. You can imagine a complex function. Um, but, but this is also a kind of a, an overly complex way of looking at it. Um, not that it's not uh, indicative of the complexity, but it, it becomes difficult to discuss it. So the simplified model is one that is used often just in, in terms of discussion. I want to show you this brief uh, video about what the brain's wiring looks like. There is no sound here, um, but there's some words on the screen that will tell you what you're looking at, and I will also give you a little bit of information. <clears throat> this is a really detailed scan of what the wiring of the human brain looks like. I got this from the BBC website recently. 